Hey, it's Tony from Cassette Comeback and welcome to day six of seven cassettes in seven days. And today we're going to look at this. A ooh, James York C90 high reliability, professional quality cassette. And straight away, it's from a brand that probably none of us have heard of. It's got a compact cassette symbol on it and it's in a fairly plain case. Let's see what it says on the back. Precision product. Yeah, yeah. Maximum reliability. Don't touch it. Yeah, don't expose it to heat. Keep it dry. Protect your recording by removing the lugs. Made in England. James York. North Leach in Gloucestershire. Made in England. Does that mean it's all made in England? Or does it mean assembled in England? Sometimes you don't no, but um, one thing that's very apparent just from looking at this though is that I can't actually see what this is because normally they have, you know, type one or normal position or ferric or this doesn't have anything. It doesn't seem to give any clues as to what type of cassette or tape it is. So I guess we should open it. Now, before we continue, this is how I received it. It is not sealed. So, you know, I don't know the, the the history of this cassette. I don't know, you know, if at some point down this line someone swapped some, you know, TDK AR tape into it. I, I honestly don't know, but let's have a look anyway. So, as predicted, it is a black shell with a paper label. In fact, it doesn't even say, you know, what side it is. The side bit is left blank on both sides. But however, in the in the shell, we've got, you know, a two there a one there but it's a five screw shell it, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like you know three for a pound market stall quality it does feel half decent um it doesn't seem to have any bits to put noise reduction because usually you have noise reduction on off or in out or whatever but there's there's none of that on there so it's a fairly plain cassette looking a bit like a late 70s tdk SA actually so inside the j card itself yeah, there's there's not a lot to say about that neither. So, so far a bit of a, a mystery. Let's have a look and see if uh, the tape throws up any red flags. Well, it's a red leader, like a bit like the uh, Yoshima from the other day. So, yeah, the tape itself looks quite dark. Yeah, it's quite quite dark. It's. Uh, yeah, it's, it looks a bit concave actually. It's not excessively shiny or calendared to be honest. It's a bit dull, but um, yeah, we could be going into type zero territory now. James York, I've, I've tried to have a look round to see if I can get any history on this or anything. And um, all I've found is that the, this isn't the only cassette they made. There is a, another one, but I don't want to show a picture of it because um, yeah, I, I just don't want to, but they've, they've made a, a later cassette than this. Um, but it also the other thing I only found was this, which is from a, a trade magazine called uh, Studio Sound from 1983, where they talk about duplication and that, you know, using James York cassettes means that you're going to get best quality, etc, etc. Because, you know, so um, and I've also found that James York seemed to do duplication runs and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, even though that says Oxford, James York seemed to be somebody that did duplication. Maybe they made their own cassettes. Maybe they just assembled them and loaded them from tape they got elsewhere. But I couldn't find anything that said, oh yes, this is definitely X. So I'm hoping this isn't a type zero because, you know, if they're basing their reputation as a duplicator on the quality of the cassettes they make, then, you know, you, you hopefully aren't, you know, coughing out crap. So I guess the best thing to do now is just to fire up a deck, get it calibrated and have a listen. Right, we're going to use the Arkham Delta 100, so uh, let's pop this in and hope that we can calibrate it. So, I've put the bias and the calibration levels to dead centre. Get the cal tone on, and let's see if we can buy this up. 
Okay, so, ooh, that's really down. So the calibration is okay, it's about there on level, but uh, bias is miles away. Let's see if we can get anything. Oh yeah, we can get it. We can. Right, the bias is at the extremes of negative, a bit like the EMI XT was in the, uh, in the Iowa, except for the, you know, the actual level calibration is fine but the bias needs lots and lots reducing and it's still not quite there but it's the best we're going to get it okay right well guess what we're going to use synergy again yeah are you fed up of that track yet i'm not i think it's awesome so let's have a listen i'm going to record this at around zero i don't want to push this old cassette much further than that and let's have a listen see if it does a good job or not So uh, it's not a type zero, certainly not a type zero, but um, I think because of the bias requirements, i.e. you know, even cranked all the way, removing as much bias as we can, we still couldn't get this fully calibrated. Um, it seemed to be lacking, the, it seemed to be lacking in the, in the treble and the mid, to be honest with you, but not a type zero. And again, we have to take it into context. Oops, by dropping it, ha 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 ha. Yeah, so we have to take it into context. This was probably a cheap cassette, like I say. Nothing about this says premium, but, you know, put it into a, a regular cassette deck which hasn't got biasing capabilities. If it didn't match up, this is probably going to sound a lot worse than a D, a bit like with the EMI stuff. But yeah, let's go back to the table and conclude this little video. The truth. So not as bad as a market stall special, but 
you know, probably doesn't hold much of a candle towards the competing TDKs, Max House, Sony's for all the time. But as a collectible, a little curio, you know, James York, a duplicator, it seems, that decided to release their own cassettes, but didn't bother to put stuff like NR on there or let us know actually what it is that the cassette actually is. In fact, bear with me one second. No, just having a sniff, just in case, just in case, because it doesn't signify anywhere what type of cassette this is, even though it's apparently a type one. I just wondered if it had a chromey smell and maybe it was a type two without notches on the top. Just, just out of interest, you know. Well, there we go, it isn't. Um, so yeah, curiosity or collector purposes, if you really want to James York, you know, a bit of a trendsetter maybe, insofar as one of the earliest duplicators that actually manufactured their own tape or sold their own blanks along with the duplication that they did. Like I say, I can't find anything which will say where this tape stock comes from or where the shells come from, or if it was all made in house really don't know but i would have thought if they were manufacturing tape etc there would have been more of a footprint on the internet about them these are probably just loaded with something from back in the day and like i say unspectacular performance lacking highs and mids but definitely not a dropout uh, dropout city cassette and you know certainly not a type zero and again if you're new to this you don't know what type zero is type zero is basically a low quality type one cassette that's so bad that it's called a type zero because it's not really good enough to be classed as a type one it was not an official type but other than that that's about all i've got to say about this cassette really so uh until tomorrow which is the last day of seven cassettes in seven days i'll just say happy taping and i'll catch you then bye bye